back here with another YouTube video. Today, I have made the craziest discovery. Actually, two days ago I did, but currently we are gaming on Ethernet, and you see our FPS is at 75. Now, we're gonna disable Ethernet completely, and then plug in a Wi-Fi adapter, and we'll go to the same place on the map, and we'll see how much the FPS is. Just to prove that I'm not changing anything, this is 1920, 1080, all the image settings there, all the graphics on the same. Okay, now I'm just gonna quit the game, plug in Wi-Fi, disable Ethernet, and then we'll come back in. Come on. Okay lads, a historic moment is about to be made here. We're running on Wi-Fi. There's a Realtek uh, 8822BU wireless adapter. Comes with Bluetooth as well. This one's made by uh, yours truly. Edops, <laughs> and uh, comes with a nice antenna. One of my crappy pre-builds that I built for my business. We are back. This time we're running on Wi-Fi. As you can see, the FPS has gone up so hard. It's literally what it was 74, 75 before, right? Bordering on nearly 80. Now. All the way up to 85, 90 FPS. Looking up at dome, 90 FPS. Here we go, swing around here, 87, 89 average. Why is this the case? Why is Windows 10 this crap? Honestly, I don't understand. Because the only way I managed to find out this was the case was because I had a uh, an Ethernet adapter in a customer's computer. That completely did not work, and that was a, a brand new build. <laughs> Everything was running well. I tested it on Wi-Fi, but I didn't use the Ethernet. And I realized the Ethernet adapter was missing completely. So I had to buy one from TP-Link. I plugged it in. Uh, yep. Yeah, before that, I tested Warzone. It was running at 160 to like 200 FPS. And when the customer came, I was like, yeah, this thing runs really well, it's excellent, it's 160. And then when I actually boot it up and play it, it's running at like 110, right? Bordering to like uh, a nice low of 60 inside the city areas. And it, it was dumbfounding because it was working so well, right? Like, how does that even happen? It, it doesn't make any sense. So... I, I went through all of it, I was overclocking it before, so I, I turned all of it to default, I turned only XMP on, none of it worked. Literally none of it worked. So the the last thing I was like, there is absolutely no ducking way that it is the Wi-Fi. So I took out the Ethernet, pulled it clean out of the board like this, yeah, and it, it's gone, right? Plug it back in, turn on the Wi-Fi, use Wi-Fi, and holy shit, it went to the whole 160 FPS, bordering on 200. And I was absolutely astounded that Microsoft could ever do anything so stupid as to mount up all the Ethernet drivers coming on from Windows 7. Because the thing was, um, the thing is, from Windows 7, I think they all used uh, line-based drivers from um, Ethernet, USB, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, everything under the sun, right? But moving to Windows 10, Microsoft was like, eh, yeah, you guys need to use MSI mode. So, um, these Ethernet adapters, I don't even know if they're designed for MSI mode, but I don't think they are properly compatible with it, and I don't think it's a good protocol for Ethernet adapters. Because the way MSI mode works is that it allows the CPU to communicate in, uh, in larger blocks of data from the exact PCIe device. So, um, if you think about that, it's a good idea for graphics cards because it will be more direct, but that also means the cache on the CPU is going to get saturated like hell. Because um, the larger the blocks of data coming in from the network card, of course, this thing called Ethernet, which is of course the, uh, the benchmark of stability, right? If that saturates the cache, there's no room for the, the GPU. There's no room for it to process mouse movements on the cache. It's all going to memory now. And the scheduling is that bad because this is set to um, MSI mode. Sometimes it's even set to high by default, right? So um, that's taking up all your cache on your CPU. That's taking up like a good top priority tier of your mouse movements. And that's, that's all in the way, right? 
So you're gonna play like crap in every game. Uh, CSGO, Warzone, Rust. I've tested every one of these. Uh, it drops the FPS by like 15 to 20% if you play on Ethernet. I shit you not. And if you use Wi-Fi, all of a sudden, oh my lord, everything feels more responsive. Your FPS goes up by like 20, 30, 40 FPS on the uh, higher end builds. And uh, you go from, from CSGO, I was playing on 240, and uh, it went all the way up to 270 low. And um, the averages went from 270 to 340. And the highs went all the way up to like 420 instead of the uh, the average of uh, high 380. So the improvement is palpable. It is massive, especially for four core CPUs, especially for four core eight thread CPUs. You know, when you play Warzone and your game's like stuttering all over the place and everything feels like crap and it's a second gen CPU, that's because your, uh, your cache is too small. It's not gonna be able to handle the ethernet port and the GPU at the same time. Right? And uh, the thing is, the industry standard since Windows 7 has always been Ethernet good, Wi-Fi bad, because um, yeah, most Wi-Fi suck ass, right? But uh, this is the 8822BU. This thing works. Um, I don't know, if you use Telstra, it might blue screen, because Telstra has this shitty protocol called band steering, and doesn't work. But the, the other thing that does work is using the, uh, the Intel AX200. And usually they come, uh, you can get them on AliExpress, you can get them anywhere you want. Uh, sometimes they import them to Australia and they come on this uh, little card here and uh, this thing will penetrate probably two or three walls easily uh, you just plug in the back and uh, yeah, you have Wi-Fi, you have Bluetooth, everything's in there and you have two really strong antennas, I think uh, EDOP also sells these all the other wireless brands also ship them oh yeah, AX210, AX200, they have like one millisecond of return time lag to the router and uh, they're actually faster in fact, then your baseline Ethernet that's built into the board, because these things only run about um, probably two or three milliseconds to the router, and they're they're actually yeah they're a lot slower. Um, honestly, you'd see an improvement moving to some of these Wi-Fi six, especially the PCIe ones. But once again, uh, I think you can try setting it to low priority on the Intel AX two hundred. I haven't tried this, but I'm assuming you might be able to. Uh, some Ethernet adapters, if you change from MSI to line-based, it will resolve a lot of that stuttering, but the problem is your hit rate is going to be awful. So I recommend just moving to straight Wi-Fi. That's usually the best scenario here. And uh, if, and only if, your Wi-Fi supports line-based, like if it's a legacy kind of uh, N Wi-Fi, probably there's like one from TP-Link. I was really famous as like one of those white sticks with a really huge antenna for 2.4 gigahertz. Those things I'm pretty sure are line based and they only work unfortunately in Windows 7. But yeah, if you have anything that works in Windows 7, use Windows 7 because it has none of this BS. So uh, yeah, that's, um, that's my 25 cents from today. And uh, probably the most game changing moment in the PC gaming industry because we have never found definitively the cause of input lag that moving to Windows 10 has caused and this I fear might actually be it so uh, yeah here we are today uh, back with this groundbreaking YouTube video so um, leave a like and subscribe and uh, if you guys have any other experiences with what causes input lag please let me know in the description uh, this is pretty pretty major for all competitive gaming and uh, Honestly, for even the pros, probably need to have a look at this because um, you, you would not suspect it. The only way I found out was by accident, purely by accident. This thing, one of my computers, uh, was a Ryzen system, I think it was a Gigabyte board, the B550M Aorus Pro or whatever it was. And that just came with a dead NIC. <laughs> if I didn't have the dead NIC, I would have just been like, yeah, uh, probably just runs like ours anyways. So, um, yeah, drop a like or I'll uh, drop your ethernet connection. Uh, yeah, have fun guys, honestly. Um, there's probably one more other tip I can show you guys in the meantime. And that's uh, how to further reduce your input lag on pretty much all fronts, right? So, you know how everyone recommends you, oh, display scaling is better than GPU scaling? It's not, it's literally the opposite. 
GPU scaling has been better than display scaling since uh, probably the dawn of the 400 series Nvidia cards or even the 9800 GTs and stuff. So turn this to GPU scaling, swing your mouse around and see the difference. It is definitely there. You get like half your input lag straight from that. And then you um, to further solve your input lag, there's, a, there's one last step and that is you need to have MSR Util and uh, it's not a crazy good tool but it's the one tool that can fix your Ryzen input lag as well this is the all-in-one fix guys I'm, I'm telling you this is the the only thing that will fix your input lag all the other things I've seen it's all placebo if not um it only barely affects it high precision event timer turning that off is actually it's not bad it does help a tiny bit but only by like 0.5 of a millisecond it in the long term, yes, it's a good idea. Inspect is always a good idea to disable as well. The um, the meltdown spectre patches are a pain in the ass for FPS. It's always bad. And um, yeah, MSI Util V3, you need a download because V2 it doesn't tell you what exactly you are disabling, so that doesn't really help. Uh, yeah, just bear with us. This computer's a bit potato. It's a um, R54590, only a quad core, and it's running on an SSHD. <laughs> And I'm still trying to close Rust, but it's not letting me. Okay, so here we are. Uh, Alright, the only thing you can be running MSI on is the GT1030 here. Your graphics card, whatever it is, set that to high mode. That absolutely helps tons. Uh, line base as well works fairly well. I feel like um, your frame rates are slightly smoother with MSI mode. I cannot really confirm further than that, because my high-speed camera is way too low resolution to really do anything. But, um, yeah. For your AMD systems, especially, make sure your USB controllers here are all turned to line base. Untick all the MSI modes on every USB controller, even the NVIDIA, even the AMD ones, uh, for your graphics card, right? Turn them all off to line based only, and turn all their priorities, especially the ones that you have your mouse and keyboard plugged into, to high. Unplug all your crap USB devices that you don't use, like hard drives, SSDs, and all that. And uh, yeah, try to minimize, I reckon, since everything on PCIe goes to the CPU, uh, try to minimize the amount of sound cards you have, the amount of uh, extra NVMe drives, because that's all going to queue up to the buffer on the CPU, which is the cache. And the cache is the most important thing when you're going for competitive gaming. Okay. That's the end of that. So uh, yeah, as always, 